Jesus gave seven sayings on the cross. Seven. He gave three between nine o'clock in the morning and noon. He gave four afternoon. Between noon and three o'clock in the afternoon when he gave up the ghost. It is interesting to me <laughs> that of the seven sayings of the cross, the first three have nothing to do with his own suffering. Nothing at all. Bear in mind, nobody ever suffered like Jesus suffered. The physical suffering was incomparable, but the, but the spiritual suffering was beyond measure. No one has ever suffered like Jesus suffered. But for three hours, he didn't say a word about it. He did not speak in the first person. I thirst until at the second three hours of the cross. He did not speak of his own suffering to be cared for the needs of others. The first statement of, the, of Calvary our Lord made was, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Bear in mind, nails in his hands and feet. Crown of thorns on his head. This is the King of glory, the King of kings, and the Lord of all lords. And yet this king had no throne but a cross. He had no crown but a crown of thorns, and no reed but a, royal, but a broken walking stick, no scepter but a broken walking stick, and no royal robe but a borrowed overcoat from a soldier, and no sign but a hand-painted sign saying, This is the king of the Jews, and no subjects but a jeering mob saying, Crucify him, crucify him. First he said, in spite of the nails and the crown of thorns and the jeering mob and the suffering of the cross, and in a few moments the Father is going to turn his back on him because he's going to bear your sins and mine. He's going to cry, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Before he ever says that, he says, Father, forgive them. Sort of makes you think of mother, doesn't it? Like the little boy that went to school one day and teacher in mathematics class said if you had a piece of pie and you had four in the family, how many pieces of pie would mama cut? And he said three. No, said there's four in the family. said how many pieces of pie would mama cut? And the little boy said three. The teacher said no, there's one, two, three, four in the family. You're going to cut a piece of pie. How many pieces would you cut? And he said three. The teacher said well there's four. One for you, one for your brother or sister, one for your father, one for your mother. He said, no, said, my mama would say she didn't want any. And that's sort of the way mamas are, isn't it? Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. The second saying our Lord made from the cross was made to the dying thief. <coughs> At least one of the first three said, uh, uh, today shall thou be with me in paradise. Now he's going to say, after a while, into thy hands I commend my spirit, or my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, or I thirst, but not until he mentions that takes care of the needs of others. So the first three sayings of the cross, first, Father, forgive them. Actually, the second, I think, was, woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother, and the third, Father, forgive them, are, are in the, the day shall thou be with me in paradise, he thought of somebody else. But now wait a minute for a minute. Our Lord on the cross. This is the highest power in human history. This is the place from which all the rivers of the Old Testament flow, into which they flow, and from which begin all the springs of prophecy. This is Calvary, God incarnate, becoming flesh. This is the cross. This is it. Every scripture in the Old Testament really pointed to Calvary. And every scripture in the New Testament points back to Calvary. And every person who believes before Calvary believes by looking to Calvary. And every person who believes since Calvary believes by looking back to Calvary. And all who had deemed in heaven will sing about Calvary. This is Calvary, the apex, the center, the pinnacle of all of human history. And our Lord opens his mouth to speak. I wonder what he's going to say. Maybe he'll tell us something about justification. Maybe he'll tell us something about the glories of heaven. Maybe he'll give us some great theological proof he's ever heard before. Our Lord is going to speak. Listen, he talks. John, take care of Mama. Mama, John's going to take care of you from now on. To me, that's one of the sweetest things in all the Bible. Our Lord... On, his, on the cross, dying 
thought of his mother. I want you to notice three things he gave his mother that first Mother's Day. He gave her no flower. He gave her no pot plant. He gave her no croissants. He gave her no gift to unwrap, and that morning she did not find him at the table saying, Mother, Happy Mother's Day. No, she, she did not have that privilege. But on that first Mother's Day, our Lord gave his mother three things that every child ought to give to his mother. The first thing he gave her, he gave her the assurance of where he was going. Hey, does your mother have that? Huh? Does your mother have that? He gave her the assurance of where he was going. Does your mother know where you're going? Does your mother have the assurance you'll be in heaven? Is yours? How about yours? How about yours? Pastors, don't let the folks come in after I begin preaching, please. This is urgent and important. You do not need the moving of chairs now. Does your mother know? When our Lord died, he said, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. He was saying, Mother, listen to this, I am going to paradise today. He said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. He's saying, Father, I'm coming to be with you. And his mother, though her heart was broken, those hands that she had felt rubbing her cheek in infancy. Now she sees the nails in those hands and the blood running down from them. And those little feet that had fallen around the house and she had kissed them. And maybe in those days they didn't do this, but now we do say, this little piggy went to market and this little piggy stayed home and this little piggy had no sleep and this little piggy had none. And this little piggy cried, all the way home. I can still recall my mother doing that. They're not little piggies anymore. They're big hogs now. <coughs> but, uh, but uh, she saw those feet that once had toddled around the house, and she played with the toes, and now nails are piercing them, nailing them to a cross. And she saw the side, the little body that she'd held next to her own breast right yonder 33 years ago. She saw the spear in the side, and she saw the, the wound, and she saw the blood creeping down from the side, and she looked at the back that she had patted, and and, uh, and, uh, and many times on which her hands had hit, and she saw the back beaten, as Isaiah said, with a cat of nine tails. In the 52nd chapter it says, so that she couldn't even tell he was a son of, a son of man or a human being at all. She saw the back that she had loved and caressed, and the arms and the hands and the feet, and now she sees a bloody a hunk of mass of flesh, beaten beyond recognition. And uh, her heart is broken, but yet she knows that's the will of God for him, and she's known it ever since the day the angel came in Nazareth and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. But she knows this is the will of God, but there's one blessed thing. Our Lord left his mother on that first Mother's Day. He left her the assurance that he was going to be with the Father. Does your mother have that assurance today? I don't care how many gifts you gave your mother this morning. If she doesn't know you're going to heaven, you've missed the whole purpose of Mother's Day. All about it. I am in, down in Dallas, Texas, years ago. There was a story that I'm sure that you've heard, and maybe you've heard me tell it. There was a father who was dying in the Oak Cliff section of Dallas where I grew up. <laughs> the father was dying. And the son, I think there were six boys in the family. And uh, I know someone who was there and saw this experience. And the boys came by, and the father was on his deathbed, and the boys came by to tell him goodbye. And the oldest son came and said, and the father looked up and said, said, good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. And the second son came by and kissed his father, and his tears fell on his father's dying face. And the father said, good, good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. And the third son came, and he was heartbroken. And the father looked up and said, um, good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. And the fourth son came with a broken heart and eyes filled with tears. And the father said, good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. And the fifth son came, and uh, and uh, the son said, uh, goodbye, goodbye, father. And the father said, good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. And finally came the youngest boy. All the boys are grown. And the youngest boy came, and the father said, goodbye, son. And the boy said, Daddy, you didn't say that to the others. Daddy, you, you said good night, son. I'll see you in the morning. You didn't say it to the others. You said goodbye to me. Why? And the dying father looked up and said, Son, because you're not saved, you're not saved. And said, Son, I wish I could say good night. I'll see you in the morning, but I won't see you, son, because you're not saved. And the boy said, Daddy, I want to be saved now. I want to be saved now. And he fell to his knees beside his daddy's body and received the Savior. And his daddy, the last words he said were, 
Good night, son. Now I can see you in the morning. I was thinking, oh, my mother's 86. Maybe next Mother's Day, who knows, I'll be gone, or she'll be gone. Oh, but let me tell you something. We've made our plans. We've got our ticket punched. We don't, we don't plan to be separated very long. Oh, maybe this morning you have a mother who's around the throne of Jesus singing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and watching those three of those angelic creatures with, uh, full of eyes, the Bible says, Revelation chapter 4, who sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come, and yet you have not prepared to meet her. Oh, Jesus let his mother know he was going to meet her. I was thinking, Dr. Burns, about you last night. I don't know why, I don't know why it's his Mother's Day today, and I was thinking about you last night, Dr. Billy reared in an orphanage, and I was thinking about uh, my own father. Well, you see, 24 years ago today, he buried my dad in the drunkard's grave. And Mother's Day has sort of been ruined ever since for my mother and for us, and Father's Day has too. But 24 years ago today, I felt his cold face and death. And I've often thought, I wish my dad had taken time to play ball with me. We never played ball together. I wish my dad had taken me fishing sometimes. He never did. I wish my dad had had time for me five minutes sometime in his life. He never did. My dad never bought me a stitch of clothing. He never bought me a pair of shoes. Well, one time, he bought me a little blue T-shirt, and I'll never forget it. But I'd be glad to trade all of those wishes and hopes. If I had one hope today, one shred of hope that my father was in heaven. Oh, listen, children. Listen, son. Listen, daughter. All oh, the cassages won't take the place of letting your mother know that you're prepared to die, prepared to meet God. All the flowers and all the pot plants and all the gift wraps and all the dresses and all the financial gifts will not take the place of saying, Mother, I'm saved. But regardless of what happens, we will be with Jesus forever. Tell Mother, I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior, to her bear. Tell Mother, I'll be there in answer to her prayer. Oh, Savior, tell my mother, I'll be there. He's dying. He gives his mother on the first Mother's Day the assurance of where he was going. There was a second gift that our Lord gave to his mother. I want you to listen to this one. Our Lord gave to his mother the assurance of provision for her life. Very interesting to me. John didn't, Jesus did not say to John when, he was, when Jesus was 30 years of age, John, behold my mother. Jesus didn't want John to take care of his mother then. Jesus took care of her himself. He provided for his mother. Oh, this generation of irresponsible, shiftless young people who let their mothers rot somewhere, forgotten in some rest home, and never go see them, and never ride them, and never give them a happy time. This morning, I got up, and the first thing I thought about is I looked out the window, and as I do every morning, I quoted Psalm 17:15. I shall be satisfied when I wake and I likeness and I said, Jesus, are you going to come today? Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Oh, I want to thank him for his saving grace. And I want, I want you to come today. And then my next thought turned to all the thousands of others today who lie in rest homes. I think of the most so often when I visit another, in a city, Brother Pierce, I'd take an afternoon off sometimes, or an hour off, and I'd just walk to some rest home somewhere. And I, I walk in and go from bed to bed. And mothers, so many of them today, would long, longing to see sons and daughters who care so little and give so little. But our Lord wasn't that way. He set the example for us when he was dying. He said, John, take care of mother. These arms of mine have taken care of her. As I worked in the carpenter shop for 33 years, I asked nobody to take care of my mother. I took care of my mother. But, John, I'm going to heaven. Now would you take care of my mother? The Bible does say he did not provide us not for his own. is worse than an infidel. Let me ask you a question. Under what conditions does your mother live today? Huh? You live in a nice place and she lives in a shack somewhere? Huh? You eat steak while she eats beans? Now, beans cost more than steak these days. We used to say, could say that. But you eat steak while she eats beans? You wear nice clothes while she gets all with hand-me-downs? How does your mother live today? 
Don't you talk about Mother's Day. Don't you send a flower that will wilt tomorrow and that will decay in a few days and turn to seed. Don't you do it! Unless your mother has the care and provision from you that she deserves. Can you take her tender care as a child and as a baby and not give her tender care while she's old? Can you eat her food from her hands and her sacrificial uh, hands as a child and not give, you, give, give her food while she's old? Can you take the garments that she sacrificed to place on your body while she while you're a little child, and when she gets old, you won't even put decent clothes on her back? What kind of love is that, young people? What kind of love is that? This hypocritical kind of a love that says, Uncle Sam, you take care of my mother. As I'm concerned, I'll Uncle Sam, you take care of your business. I'll take care of my mother. You ought to say, as long as I've got an arm, as long as I've got strength, as long as I have a healthy body, I'll take care of my mother. Tell mother I'll be there, that's one thing. But tell mother I'll care is another thing. Jesus said, mother, I'll take care of you. I'll take care of you. But there's a third thing this morning that Jesus, I want to call the attention that Jesus gave to his mother. He's dying. He could have said, I thirst, but not yet. He's going to say, I thirst, but not yet. He's going to say, Father, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, but not yet? With his back burning and beaten, and the blood is caked on his back, and his side is about to be pierced with a spear, and nails in his hands and in his feet, and knowing that someday, the father, in some moment, the Father's going to turn his back on him. The Bible says Jesus was with the Father from eternity. They had never been separated, never one time. I was thinking last Friday night, do you know that I never slept in a house away from my mother till I went in the army in World War II? Never did. Never did. Never went to camp, couldn't afford to go to camp. Never slept in a house that my mother didn't sleep in the same house as far as I can, as far as I can remember. So I went in the army in World War II. Our Father and, and our Father and our Savior had the same fellowship. The Father and the Son, they turn his eyes, and Jesus knows in a few moments the Father is going to turn his back, and he's going to bear our own sins in his body, dying for you and for me, bearing my sins and yours. Jesus knows that. He says, John, behold, my mother, this is Mother's Day. But if anybody what else he gives his mother, he gives her a son who was in the will of God. I'll talk to you for a minute about that. I want to chat with you. If you know, you're not supposed to give your mother necessarily what she wants on Mother's Day, but what God wants you to give her on Mother's Day. Or shall I put it this way? Not necessarily what your mother wants, but what she will have wanted for you in eternity. Let me give you an example. My father was not saved. He did not want me to be a preacher. My father hated preachers. My father cursed preachers. He did not want me to be a preacher. When my father heard that I was going to be a preacher, he pushed me down and kicked me a little bit in the side and, and, uh, and said an awful thing to me. But I believe today, regardless of where he is, I think he wants me to be in the will of God now. I owe it to my mother to be in the will of God. Why do you think she cradled me in her arms when I was a baby? So I'd be in, always in the will of God. Why do you think that she nurtured me and cared for me and sat beside me when I was sick at night all night long? Why? So I'd be in the will of God. And I want to give my mother, and I want you to give your mother the greatest gift that you can give. And that is a son who lives and bathes himself in the will of God. Or a daughter who lives and bathes herself in the will of God. Just say, I want to be in the will of God and give my mother that gift on Mother's Day. Hey, you that went to a tavern last night, that's not why your mother cared for you when you were a child. Hey, you that have liquor in the icebox at home, that's not why your mother cared for you. Your mother had something far holier in mind than that. Your mother had something far nobler in mind than that. Your mother had in mind a stalwart young man, a fine, upstanding young lady who would live in God's will. And that's what you can do for your mother on Mother's Day, 1974. You can say, Mother, I know I'm going to heaven. Mother, I'll take care of you as long as you live. Mother, I promise you, I'll do the will of God. 
I want you to notice one statement that our Savior made in closing this morning. I think this is one. I never noticed this before exactly like this. He said, Woman, behold thy son. But he said, Son, behold thy mother. On that first Mother's Day, he gave his own mother the assurance that he was going to be with the Father in heaven. He gave his own mother the, the, the assurance of provision for her life. He gave his own mother the joy of knowing that she had reared her son to be in the will of God. But I think he wanted to give John something. Don't you see? <clears throat> John was his closest disciple. It was John who leaned on his breast. It was John who was called simply that disciple whom Jesus loved. It was John that ran, that ran the fastest to the tomb after a while when our Lord was raised from the dead. It was John who was with him on the Mount of Transfiguration. It was John who was there when he raised the dead. It was John who was with him at the last three that went to the top of the mountain in Gethsemane. John was his favorite disciple and the best disciple of all. The one who's the most sacred, the one whom we revere the most. And Jesus was saying, John, take care of mother. But wait a minute, take care of mother. And he said, John, because you've been so dear to me and because you're so helpful to me, I'm going to give you a gift too. I'm going to give you the greatest gift I can give you. I give you John. A mother. A mother. A mother. And so John took her to his own house. Jesus said, John, I'll give you a mother. When God gave you a mother, he gave you this one of the sweetest things you'll ever have. Think back for a minute, would you please, and we'll close. Think back for a minute. Remember that night when you were sick? The doctor said you had pneumonia, a strep throat, a bad case of the measles, maybe. Remember? Remember how you sweated? Remember how you got cold and pulled the covers up and you chilled and, and, and the cover just seemed like it didn't do the job and, and you began to feel so hot and yet cold? And the fever got higher. And maybe you went out of your head a little while. But in the wee hours of the morning, you didn't feel good, and you ate, and you wondered if you were going to live. Boys, on the front, listen to me. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You remember how you felt? Three o'clock in the morning. And when you woke up and you looked up, who was there? Mother. Mother. Can you forget how she went without so you could have? I can recall just like it was yesterday when my mother for 12 years didn't get a new dress. Of course, she's here this morning. She's had one. Oh, one in the last 12 years, I think. But uh, I can recall when my mother didn't have a new dress for 12 years or a new pair of shoes. I can recall her taking me down to the, the out, outland, Outland or Outlaw, <laughs> Outlet, Outlet Shoe Store in Dallas, Texas. And with welfare stamps. I can remember my mother giving us all some stamps and then putting a new pair of shoes on my feet. And I can recall coming back and to school the next day and Mrs. Kelton, my teacher, said, Jack, you got some new shoes, haven't you? And I said, yeah, I got new shoes. I showed them like that. My mother didn't have any shoes. We had no welfare stamps that used them on me. I can recall when my mother was 45, 50 miles. Her teeth needed pulling. We couldn't afford it. Her teeth literally rotted in her mouth. I don't know whether she remembers this or not, but she didn't. She knows I remember her teeth rotted in her mouth. Literally. My mother's teeth weren't white when she was the age I am now. It was black. But I had my teeth checked regularly. Don't you remember? Don't you remember? Who do you think went to the jaws of death the way you in the world? Who do you think fed you when you couldn't feed yourself? Who do you think loved you before you could even know your own name? 
Who do you think prayed you to health when you were sick? Who do you think prayed that your mouth was something? Who do you think gave you her life day and night to make something out of you? Mother did. I say with Jesus this morning, behold, your mother. And give her on Mother's Day 1974. First, a son or a daughter who lives his life in the will of God. Secondly, give her a son or a daughter who says, Mother, I am going to provide for you as long as I live, as long as you live. And give her your mother this morning, a mother who knows that the family is all in me for whatever comes. Tell Mother I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior, to her there. Tell Mother, I'll be there. Heaven joys with her to share. Oh, Savior, tell my mother, I'll be there. Oh, I'll be there. Can you tell your mother that? by your head for prayer, please. The whole time of it. That's really what Mother's Day is all about. It's a day to behold my mother. I'm sorry, beloved friend, there's a flower which just will not be enough. That's not enough. It may soothe your conscience, but it won't satisfy your God. I'm sorry. A gift that costs two ninety eight or a hundred and two ninety eight, it won't be enough. I'm sorry, that's just not enough. You ought to say to your mother today by your life, Mother, you're gonna have a child who lives in the will of God. And mother, you're gonna have a child who takes care of you. And mother, you're gonna have a child who can look you in the eye and say, Mother, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Heads are bowed. Mrs. Colston plays softly a stanza of that song. Tell Mother I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior, to her there. Can you say it this morning? Tell Mother I'll be there in answer to her prayer. This message, blessed Savior, to her there. Tell Mother I'll be there. Heaven's joys with her to share. Oh, tell my darling Mother I'll be there. Everybody who knows he's going to heaven, sing that chorus as Dr. Willing Jesus, would you please? Everybody with that spout who knows it, sing it, ready? Tell Mother I'll be there. Sing it this morning. In answer to this message, blessed Savior, to this her. message, blessed Savior, to her day. If you're saying, sing it. If you're not, don't. Tell me about it. Heaven joys with her to share. Heaven joys with her to share. Tell oh, Savior, tell my mother, I'll be there. I'll be there. It's about an hour to hold how many can say, I'll be there, Brother Hiles. I'm saved and I know it. I'm going to heaven. I know I'll be there. Lift your hand, would you please, all over the building. All over the building. You can put your hands down. Every eye is closed. I wonder how many would say, Brother Hiles, I couldn't raise my hand. I don't know that I'm going to heaven. But it's time I did. It's time I faced it. It's time I shook myself and looked at myself and said, you've got to face it. It's time I did something about it. Brother Hiles, I don't know I'll be there, but I want to know. I want to know that I'm going to heaven. Pray for me. Pray for me. Would you lift your hand for prayer, please? On the lower floor first. On the lower floor. You don't know that you're going to heaven, but you wish you did. And you'd say, pray for me. Lift your hand for prayer. God bless you on the back row. God bless you. Yes, I see three hands back in the back. <laughs> yes, God bless you. God bless you. Who else? 
on the lower floor. Pray for me. I want to know that I'm going to heaven. I don't know it now. God bless you. I see you. God bless you, sir. I see your hand. God love you. Who else would say include me in the prayer? Yes, God bless you on the back door, sir. I have an idea. you got a mother who's up there this morning. I hope you'll get ready to meet her. Who else would say pray for me? I want to know that I'm going to heaven. I don't know it, but I wish I did. God bless you. I see you. Little girl, I see you. God love you. Who else would say on the, on the main floor, include me in the prayer. I want to be saved. I want to know that I'm going to heaven. God bless you, little lady. I see you. Who else on the main floor, lift your hand to prayer. Lift your hand. You don't know that you're going to heaven, but you wish you did. Would you lift your hand, please? Lift it way up high. The balcony on my left, would you raise your hand and say, pray for me? The balcony on my left, would you lift your hand and say, I want to know that I'm going to heaven. Pray for me. Lift your hand, please, would you? Would you? God bless you on the back row. God bless you, sir. I see you on the back row. God bless you, fellow, and God bless the lady. Who else on the left balcony? This is the east balcony. In the center balcony, who wants to say, pray for me? I want to go to heaven, but I don't know that I'm ready. God bless you, lady. I see you. God bless you. Who else in the center balcony? The balcony on my right, you say, include me in the prayer. I want to be saved this morning. I want to know I'm going to heaven. Pray for me. Lift your hand, would you please? Lift your hand, would you? Where if I would you raise it? Now with heads bowed, back to the lower floor. Who else on the lower floor would say, include me in the prayer? I don't know that I'm going to heaven, but I wish I did. Pray for me. Lift your hand, would you please? Would you? God bless you, lady. God bless you, lady. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Who else? <clears throat> Who else on the main floor? Pray for me. I want to know that I'm saved. <clears throat> Father, I could save these people. I would. But I can't. All I can do is point them to you and point you to them. Now, Lord, I've tried to point them to you. I'd like to point you to them. Father, I pray this morning you speak to their hearts. And may everyone whose hand was raised and everyone who should have raised their hand and didn't say yes to Jesus. May it be so. Now, I let you bow. I'm going to ask you this morning, right where you are, if you raise your hand, right where you are, with heads bowed, to whisper this prayer to God, say it silently, but say it. Father, be merciful to me, a sinner. Say it. Father, be merciful to me, a sinner. I do now receive Jesus as my Savior. Ah, what a day. What a day to receive Jesus. Say it. I do now receive Jesus as my Savior. Would you? Would you? If your mother's in heaven, she'll shout all day into eternity. If she's here, she'll rejoice a thousand times because you've done it. We're going to stand and sing in just a moment. When we do stand and sing, I want you that should receive the Savior to leave your seat. No one will leave the service, absolutely no one. But I'm going to ask you that should receive Jesus to come to, your, come to the nearest aisle, down the aisle of the front. You folks on the back row on the balcony, the back row, raise your hand. I want you to come. And you on the front of the lower floor, and all the way in between, I want you to come down the aisle and say yes to Jesus. If you've been saved and have not been baptized, I invite you to come. If you have want to join this church on Mother's Day in 1974, I plead with you to come. But by all means, those who have never received the Savior, won't you come and receive him today?